Hello, Keith Myers here, and this video is an introduction to peekaboo stick boxing. Now, some of you that have followed some of my videos in the past know that I have one of my things I've been doing for the last few years is kind of exploring how do you turn boxing back into a martial art or into a martial art. I would argue that it started out that way. But how are we going to turn boxing into a viable martial art for today? And so if you fall, have followed some of my other videos, you'll know that I, I centered it around a peekaboo boxing is kind of an infighting method to get in close, and then how are we going to use that for kind of street self-defense? How do we turn that into a martial art? Well, most martial arts have a weapons phase. So how do we turn that into a weapon? You know, I mean, what weapons would we use? How would we make our peekaboo martial boxing into a weapon phase? Well, the most common thing to use, again, if we're ta talking about street self-defense or just a martial art, defending yourself is a common stick, right? So this is my combination of some Filipino martial arts and the peekaboo box, martial boxing, peekaboo boxing structure and movement and power base. And my main inspiration from the Filipino martial arts is Sarada Escrima, which is kind of a close-in infighting system, okay? So, Again, this is going to give you a kind of an intro, a background, where we're coming from, and then we'll jump into some lessons that at least at the, be at the beginning will kind of parallel the videos that I've made that were lessons on how to do peekaboo boxing. Because it's going to, you, if you're going to do a weapons-based system and an empty hand-based system, you want them to overlap as much as possible. Otherwise, you're spending your, all your time training two very different things. We don't want to do that. You want to be able to train, and when you're training your empty hand system, it's reinforcing your weapon system, and when you're training your weapon system, it's reinforcing your empty hand system. So there's a nice overlap there, and it gives you more variety in your training, and maybe it becomes less boring when you can train the same thing two different ways, with a weapon or without, okay? So again, that's, that's the whole gist of where we're coming from. So the weapon itself, you know, typical stick length, anywhere, from, I had these laid out on my deck at first and they didn't show up very well, so I stood them up. But you've got 21 inch length, you've got 24 inch length, 26 and 28, okay? The 21 and 24 inch length are usually the lengths that are used for uh, Serrata Escrima and they'll even go as short as an 18 inch stick, a little bitty stick. But typically you'll see people doing either 21 or 24 and that's what I like too. That's kind of, that's a good infighting length. Okay, and then sticks come in 26 and 28 inch lengths, and you can even get them in a 32 inch length, which is a really big stick. But you can use any length stick, okay? But as, as we go, I'll point out why the shorter length stick works better, because it's just faster, okay? Because the longer your stick, the, the, the more your center of gravity of the stick shifts, okay? So, let me get these out of the way now. This is an infighting system and we got to be able to move quickly, right? You want fast, fast strikes. When you're out fighting, and I'll explain the ranges in a minute, when you're out fighting, I've got room to make big motions. I can use a heavier stick. When I'm in close, my motions have to be quick. And a shorter stick moves faster, even if it's the same weight, because this longer stick, its center of gravity is going to be out, out here, right? So see how far that is from my hand? The center of gravity for this stick is going to be much closer to my hand, which means it moves, it turns much quicker because the center of gravity is closer to my hand. Center of gravity, the balance point for the stick, okay? So a long stick, even if these two sticks are the same weight, this stick moves faster than this one for that reason. And that's why I can get a stick like this, which is a synthetic instead of rattan, and it probably weighs close to twice as much as this stick, but it's still gonna move faster than that longer stick because again, the, the center of mass, the center of gravity for that stick is closer to my hand, so it still moves fast, right? It moves fast, even if it's a lot heavier. So that means a shorter stick that's heavier is gonna hit with more impact and more mass and still move faster than a long stick that might be the same weight. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. So, the length of the stick, if we're adapting these motions to boxing motions, right, this is one factor to consider, then that means 
that my punches, boom, can become thrusts with the stick. Easy enough, right? Body shot, body shot, hook, hook. And the shorter my stick is, the more natural that feels because my hand is closer in alignment to what it would be if I was actually punching. The longer my stick is, the more I'm off at this range, right? See how that's kind of a cramped position to try to thrust from compared to the short stick, right? Maybe you can see it better over here. Here, 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 here are pretty much the same. I get a longer stick and see how I'm hitting? How it's off compared to my body? So it doesn't work as well in close. So that's why I think a shorter stick and a bigger stick is better in close. So it still hits has mass and hit with impact, but it moves fast and it fits into those cramped spaces better than a long stick. Okay? And again, this link is perfectly acceptable too. You can see it still fits. But as I get longer and longer, I kind of lose some of that mechanic because then my strike is not lined up with my hip. It ends up being out like this. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, this, the striking method we're going to use is mainly based on what in the Filipino martial arts are called abanicos. Abanico means to fan. And if I had a, <coughs> a sword, an abanico would be hitting with the flat of the sword. When you have a stick, it's hitting with the side of the stick. So instead of hitting with the surface aligned with your knuckles, it's hitting with the surface aligned with the back of your hand or with your palm. And the reason we're using this is because it's fast. Boom, boom, it's fast, changes. And it, it changes the angle quickly, right? So if I want to hit Bob on both sides of his head, right, I could just stroke through, right? But do that as fast as I can I still can't do it as fast as I can do it this way, right? A quick flip. It's just so much faster than a stroke through and hit. So that's that fast, bam, bam. And you can hit it odd angles that are unexpected, which is a good thing when you're in close, right? When I'm far away, he can kind of see things and odd angles aren't as big an advantage. But when I get close, I want to be able to hit this guy with shots that he doesn't expect, right? So, if I'm holding my weapon here, can I hit him on this side of the head? Hell yeah. I can hit him hard. If I'm out here, can I hit the guy on this side where he might not expect it? Oh, hell yeah. So, it's a, it's a fast, fast moving system. And since it flips side to side, the way, main way to generate power is going to be that pivot that we use from boxing, which you're gonna see in the first lesson, okay? Now, I'm not the first one to come up with this. I think the first one was probably Ted Lukai Lukai 25, 30 years ago. I can remember he did a videotape about stick boxing, and I had the good fortune to go to several of his seminars, and one of them was on stick boxing, and that really impressed me, because I was a boxing fan. I was learning Filipino martial arts, and I thought, Oh, good, this is to put them both together. But what most people have done, and what his focus on was at, at the time, was how do we make a sparring method, a safe sparring method, out of our stick fighting? It wasn't how do we combine boxing with a stick to make a viable martial art. It's how do we spar safely with our sticks. And so they get a padded stick, they put a pad on this hand, and they're doing a, a sparring method and then they go right back to do their and their normal stick method. So it was kind of an add-on and not an entire system unto itself, most of what I've seen. I could be wrong, I haven't seen everything out there, but if you kind of search the internet, that's what I find today. You know, it's just used as an add-on sparring system. Well, we're talking about this stick boxing, using that peekaboo boxing base is going to be primary martial art, how do we use that in self-defense? How do we fight with that? Now, we, the advantage is we can also get a padded stick, a glove, some headgear, and we can spar with it, pow, and really test our theories and make sure that they're gonna work in actuality, okay? But let's talk about the ranges where we're working because that's an important part of the background of what we're doing. It shows up in the empty hand stuff too. 
Most usually with weapons, you classify things into long range, middle range, and close range. Largo, medio, corto. That's pretty standard in Filipino martial arts, and it works well. Long range with a weapon would be if Bob had a weapon in his hand, I'm out here, and long range is where I can engage his stick or I can engage his hand with my weapon, right? But I can't do anything with this hand. I am not close enough to use this hand. I can hit with my stick. Oh, oh, oh. I can hit his weapon, I can hit his stick, but this is really not in, in, in play at this range, right? Because I'm out here. Middle range is where I get in close enough. Now I can engage his stick, I can engage his arm, and I'm close enough I can reach, at least reach out with this hand and touch his weapon hand. Right? Preferably his whole forearm, right? That's kind of a middle range. And if I move a little bit, I can kind of reach him okay, but really it's defined by I'm blocking and I'm checking. I block his strike and I can check his arm with this hand, or if I had a dagger, I could cut him. That's defined as middle range. And then close range is where I'm in close enough where I could have hit him with the puño, or I could have stabbed him with my dagger, or hit him, or done something. This hand becomes then a real player at close range, okay? From an empty hand perspective, long range is anywhere from outside to where I could just reach him with my kick because that's my longest weapon. So see, now we're not defining it by a defensive strategy. We're defining it by an offensive strategy. But long range, I can reach him with my, my kick, usually after a step. If I can reach him with a punch, then I'm entering into medium range, and if I'm close enough where both hands can land, which is essentially, essentially I can put both hands on the opponent, that's close range. You see, that then segues closely with the weapons, because we said with the weapons, I can do this. Well, obviously I'm close enough to use both hands relatively equally at close range. At middle range, I'm not really using both sides equally, and it's the same with Right? I'm here and I have to turn to reach him with this one. Okay? So I like to divide it into out fighting and in fighting, and then we could go to the ground and say there's ground fighting. But out fighting, I'm fighting on the outside. So it's anywhere from this long range to moving in where I can at least hit the guy. So I'm into that middle range. So that working from long range into middle range and back out again, that would be out fighting. Right? That's your typical Jeet Kune Do. With a weapon, out fighting range, I'd be out here, and I would be using Jeet Kune Do's like footwork because my fighting mobility is my main defense. I'm not going to stand there and block shots. I'm standing out here and I'm looking to strike to his arm or his weapon. Classic long range in Filipino martial arts, right? I'm out here. Bam! I'm taking these, these shots at his arm, and when I can, when I can, then I overlap the middle range, boom, and I put in a shot, and I'm out again. That's how I will do out fighting with the stick, which is kind of separate from the peekaboo stick boxing, but it's going to be part of the overall approach, okay? We'll come back to it later, but just realize that difference. Using a lot of evasive footwork and body motion, snapping at arms, knocking the stick out of the hitting his arm, and then closing the middle range enough to land shots and get back out again. Okay? That's out fighting. In fighting is going to be, if I don't have the weapon, and in fighting is going to be from that middle range, bridging in to try to end up at this range, now where I can use both hands equally, rather than stand back here where this hand can reach, but I have to turn to reach with that hand. Okay? So in fighting then is that overlap of middle range and close range, and out fighting is that overlap of long range middle range, okay? Whether empty hand or with a weapon is the way I look at it. Now, there's a lot, that overlap, notice, is middle range. Middle range is the overlap. That's the place where you don't want to be, right? Middle range is the exchange range. So middle range in a boxing bout is where these two guys are standing here and trading shots. Boom, boom. I can punch him, he can punch me just as equally. So I'm relying on blocking or covering. That's middle range. That's the danger zone. That's the exchange range, which I want to avoid. So from an empty hand perspective, I want to be using 
my Jeet Kune Do skills and my outfighting to stay out here. And if I bridge in, well then I want to kick into my peekaboo martial boxing, but I want to be in here and try to tie the guy up, boom, and affect his balance and keep him from being able to hit me as easily as I can hit him, which is hard to do in this middle range, okay? The same way with the weapons. I'm going to start in a long range where I can snipe, boom, I'm going to try to stay as safe as possible. And maybe I break his hand and that's all I need and I get away, right? But if I'm forced to, boom, boom, then I'm going to close to the this, past this middle range. I'm going to be in this close range and then I can then work this guy and use those people with boxing skills and keep him off balance, be whacking the hell out of him with my fast moving abanico type of strikes and work from there. Okay? A lot of what you see in the Filipino martial arts is middle range. I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe other than the fact, okay, if you've got out fighting and in fighting and the overlap at the middle range, well then hell, a lot of action happens at the middle range and we better focus on that and be really good at it. Okay, you could kind of go along with that justification. But then they stay at middle range the whole time. Maybe that's just drills, I don't know. But it doesn't seem like these, these Filipino martial arts then branch out and really work from long range, survive middle range to close in and be able to control and take the guy out at close range, right? They spend all their time standing here doing all these, like the Valentua, everything is right here. All these complicated blocks, 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 blocks. In a real situation, percentages count. And the more times I stand here and have to block a shot coming at me, the more likely the IR is that one of those is going to hit. And if you get hit with that, that's all it takes, right? You can't afford, you can't afford that. And if we're talking about blades, well then, ah, I mean, it's just that, that slip in one time and it's over. You can't afford to stand at middle range and exchange blows with this guy. That is the danger zone that we want to try to avoid, okay? So even though you'll see when we're working on Pikachu Marker Martial Boxing, we're going to be in this range, we're going to be constantly trying to get out of it and move and flank the guy and be here, right, or even completely behind him. We're going to avoid these long, drawn-out exchanges standing directly in front of this guy where he has just as much an opportunity to hit me as I have to hit him, okay? So that's where I'm coming from, the approach we're going to take with peekaboo martial box or peekaboo stick boxing now and like i said we'll just play with it and see how it parallels the the empty hand version and what we can come up with right i hope you you'll kind of follow along <laughs>